morning uh, everybody in the previous lecture we discussed about uh, the introduction to fluid kinematics then description of fluid motion the grangian method eulerian method then types of fluid flow is introduced in the types of fluid flow we discussed steady and unsteady flow uniform and non uniform flow laminar and turbulent flow so the remaining types of fluid flow we will continue in this lecture so the next one is one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional flow so in case of first uh, let me take uh, the three dimensional flow three dimensional flow when we discuss about uh, the three dimensional flow the various uh, characteristics of the flowing fluid such as the velocity pressure density mainly we call velocity the velocity is a function of of space and time here space means in cartesian coordinates if we take it can be in the x direction y direction z direction so in three dimensional flow the velocity is a function of x y z in space velocity is a function of x y z and time also so in the case of steady flow as the velocity is independent of time velocity is constant with respect to time so naturally the time function will not be there in case of steady flow but when we consider unsteady flow as velocity varies with time also so velocity varies with space x y z and also time so this type of functionality is what we call it as three dimensional flow so where we observe this three dimensional flow practically if you take it uh, for example uh mainly flow in a converging flow in a converging or diverging pipe there along the length that is x direction along the width that is y direction along the depth it is that means vertical depth z direction in all these three directions uh, the velocity is having its components similarly we can say actually even in case of uh, uh, the flow in canals also flow in canals also in which mainly the width of water depth are of the same order of magnitude then in that case also it represents three dimensional flow similarly 
flow around a bend if you take it flow around a bend that is also in the length direction width direction depth direction the velocity changes so this is the example of three dimensional flow but coming to next one two dimensional flow here also the velocity is a function of space and time but here the velocity is a function of two dimensions only x y velocity is a function of x y t the first one represents for steady flow as velocity is independent of time in case of steady flow and whereas in case of unsteady flow the velocity is a function of space and time coming to the again the examples here is also in the two dimensional flow mainly basically if you take flow in a river it generally we consider it as a two dimensional flow along the length along the depth we consider it uh, that is two dimensional flow mainly and coming to one dimensional flow here the velocity is having its component only in one direction that means velocity is a function of only length direction velocity is a function of length direction and time so the first one is for steady flow because in the steady flow the velocity is independent of time and the second one is for unsteady flow so now what is the final conclusion one two three dimensional in one dimensional flow velocity is a function of only in the space in one direction that is in the length direction whereas in the two dimensional flow velocity is a function of two dimensions that is in the length direction and in the depth direction whereas in three dimensional flow velocity is a function of length depth and width so so depending on the flow type we can classify it as one dimensional flow or two dimensional flow or three dimensional flow for example if you want one dimensional flow flow through a very very sp small diameter pipe flow through a very small diameter pipe small dia pipe is called as a generally one dimensional flow so this is the next one so coming to the uh, other one this is the uh, next one is uh, compressible and incompressible flow here as far as we are concerned the main focus in compressible and incompressible flow is in the case of incompressible flow rho is equal to constant the density is constant in the case of uh, in in incompressible flow but in the case of compressible flow rho is not constant rho is a variable most of our study is on incompressible flow only the last one which we have in this is rotational flow rotational flow and irrotational flow rotational flow first i will take in 
case of rotational flow, the fluid particles, the fluid particles while moving in the direction of flow, while moving in the direction of flow, rotate about their mass centers. The fluid particles while moving in the direction of flow rotates about their mass centers. How, how, how to explain this? I will explain with an example. The liquid in a rotating tank, the liquid in a rotating tank. Now we have taken a liquid in a tank and now the tank is being rotated. Then automatically inside water also rotates about their mass centers. In a rotating, the liquid in a rotating tank, you can take it. Where the velocity of each fluid particle is directly, it varies with the distance from the center of the tank. If you take it in a tank, we take water and the tank is rotated. Now, actually, the water starts rotating. If you see from the center, basically, what you call it as the, the from each particle from the center, if you take it, it varies the distance varies and the velocity of each particle also varies actually so that is what rotational flow then irrotational flow in case of irrotational flow the fluid particles while moving in the direction of flow while moving in the direction of flow do not rotate about their mass centers For example, if you take basically here in the case of irrotational flow, example through example, we can explain this. Now you see the motion of uh, the carriages, motion of carriages in a joint wheel. In any exhibition, you just observe actually the joint wheel motion actually. The joint wheel is rotating in a circular path. Whereas the carriages, if you observe it, all the carriages are just in the vertical position. They don't move actually. They don't rotate about the, the people who are sitting. They're always like in the sitting position only irrespective of the joint wheel position. Always they will be only vertical. So they don't rotate actually. So that's what I'm telling. The fluid particles do not rotate about their mass centers when they are moving along the flow. The flow is in the circular path. When the flow is in the circular path, but the particles do not rotate about their mass centers. That is exactly the joint wheel example, actually. Each carriage here, if we see, is suspended at the top in the joint wheel from the periphery of the wheel. And as the wheel revolves, the carriages maintain always the vertical position while moving along the circular path. The carriage does not rotate about the CG and, and also with respect to observer 
who is standing nearby. So this is what we call it as irrotational flow. Generally, the irrotational flow exists only. Irrotational flow exists. Exists only or only in case of ideal fluid flow. In the case of ideal fluid flow, we know that uh, the shear stress is equal to zero, basically. So, uh, irrespective of uh, uh, the whatever the uh, rate of uh, deformation, whatever be the velocity of gradient, uh, as uh, in the case of ideal flow, the viscosity is zero. So, automatically the shear stress is zero. So, that's why in the irrotational flow, that means uh, fluid viscosity is insignificant. Fluid viscosity is insignificant. So please remember all these points actually. When we talk about irrotational flow, first thing that should come to your mind is the joint wheel example. The joint wheel example in the sense that it is moving in a circular path, but each carriage is always standing in vertical position. They don't rotate. While moving in the direction of flow, which is circular, just because the flow is in the circular motion, it, it, it need not be rotational flow. Even the flow is in circular path. If you see it, uh, the velocity of any fluid particle, if you say it is at equal distance, it is equal at all the places. So that is why always the carriage is in vertical position. And if you observe from the bottom, the carriages are in vertical. They are not rotating so this is what uh, the far thing the final uh, i wish to finally we, we i wish to conclude this topic uh, the types of flow is very very important in the sense that types of flow which we have dealt actually in this particular topic uh, first thing is uh, steady unsteady steady unsteady flow this is one which you should Then we talked about uniform, non-uniform flow. Then we talked about laminar, turbulent flow. Then we talk about one, two, three. Dimensional flow. Then we talk about compressible and incompressible. Flow. Then we talk about uh, the last one, rotational and irrotational flow. The types of fluid flow, we will take it up. Uh, the description of fluid flow pattern straight away we will share the whiteboard to you we will take up the description of flow pattern fluid flow pattern the flow pattern may be described by means of number one streamline path line streak line before explaining all these three 
kindly note that in case of steady flow streamline path line streak line are identical or one and the same only in case of unsteady flow they change from one another now let us slowly define each one of the things first one streamline it's an imaginary line it is an imaginary line in the flow field such that the tangent at any point on this line indicates the direction of velocity the direction of velocity of flow at that point once again it is an imaginary line in the flow field such that you take any point and draw a tangent at that point the tangent represents the direction of velocity at that point if the tangent descri describes the direction of velocity at that point then this imaginary line is called as a streamline for example if you take a flow field in the two dimensional thing x y direction so these lines we can call them as streamlines provided if you draw a tangent at any point p and if this tangent say it gives the direction of velocity then we call this as streamline this particular line is called a streamline provided if you draw a tangent at any point to this line that tangent must represent the direction of velocity now this velocity can have two components in x and y direction if u is the velocity component in the x direction and small v is the velocity component in the y direction and if theta is the angle here then p coordinates are x y then actually we can write for this uh, uh, that means the for uh, basically this point p we can write tan theta is equal to tan theta is equal to small v divided by u we can write and tan theta also we can write actually as dy by dx where what are this dy by dx dy by dx are nothing but the components of dy and dx are the components of differential displacement differential displacement ds along the streamline in the immediate
vicinity of P. That means at in the immediate vicinity of P, if suppose ds is the differential displacement in the direction of velocity, then in the immediate vicinity here, this is small ds. Then naturally its components in x direction and y direction are dy by dx. If suppose this small displacement is ds and its components in x, y directions are dx, dy and this is theta. So naturally tan theta is also equal to dy by dx. So from the above two equations, we can write tan theta is equal to small v by u that is also equal to dy by dx or in other words we can write v by u is equal to dy by dx or we can write actually dx by u is equal to dy by v. So this is what we call it as the equation of streamline equation of that is also called as in other words it is u dy minus v dx is equal to 0 it is the equation of straight line. So this is also one form. This is another form for which the equation of streamline is being defined. Now, after understanding what is a streamline, so I mentioned that in case of the, this particular line is called a streamline. So at any point, if you draw naturally a tangent to it, it must represent a, the direction of velocity. So that means in the case of streamline, the velocity component is always tangential to it. The entire velocity is tangential to the streamline. When the entire velocity, entire flow is tangential to the streamline, what is the flow across the streamline? Flow across the, the streamline. is equal to 0. Why flow across the streamline is 0? Because the entire velocity component is tangential to the streamline at any point if you take along the streamline. So the velocity flow is along the tangential direction. So naturally perpendicular to it in the di normal direction, the velocity component is equal to 0. Therefore, there will not be any flow across the streamline. This is the next thing that we should remember. Flow across a streamline is equal to zero. Then coming to the next definition, what do you understand by stream tube? Stream tube is nothing but again bundle of streamlines. Bundle of streamlines is nothing but a stream tube. Again, a stream tube is an it's only an imaginary tube. It's an imaginary tube. It's an imaginary tube formed by a group of streamlines formed by a group of streamlines. This is the thing. And these streamlines pass through a closed curve. So finally, what is a stream tube? It is bundle of streamlines. It's an imaginary tube formed by a group of streamlines is called as 
a stream tube. Mainly this stream tube concept is to analyze the flow in one dimensional. So if you imagine flow through a small diameter pipe, so that pipe itself we can imagine it as a stream tube because there will not be any flow across the boundary. So the boundaries themselves are the stream tube boundaries. So, and when you are analyzing the one dimensional flow, when you are analyzing the streamline flow, this stream tube it will be extremely useful. Suppose if I call this, uh, this particular tube as a stream tube, when this is a streamline, this is a streamline, there are bundle of streamlines actually, which we can call them, this is all streamlines actually. So this type of tube is what we call it as stream tube. Mainly useful in the analyzation of one dimensional flow. The next one is what is a path line. A path traced by a single fluid particle As it moves, as it moves over a period of time, again the path line shows the direction of velocity at various instant of time. It shows the direction of velocity, shows the Direction of velocity at various instants of time. As I mentioned already, in case of study flow, the streamline and path line are identical. Then the last one is streak line. Streak line means a line that is traced. A line that is traced by a fluid particle. By a fluid particle. Passing through, this is very important point, a fixed point, passing through a fixed point in a flow field. Once again, remember, streamline is an imaginary line drawn in a flow field such that the tangent at any point represents the direction of velocity. Path line is the line traced by a single fluid particle during its course of time at various instants of time. Right? Third one, a streak line is a line that is traced by a fluid particle passing through a fixed point. Passing through a fixed point. A, a color dye, color dye, or you can take in the case of gases, a smoke. That is also you can take, right? Is injected. Smoke is injected into the flowing fluid, into the flowing fluid. Into the flowing fluid in order to 
trace the motion of fluid particles. The resulting trail of color, how this color is, color particle is moving is known as straight line. For example, smoke emanating from a chimney, here chimney is the fixed point. Dye emanating basically a color dye which is injected into liquid that is again injected from a point. So, if the fluid coming out from a fixed point into the flow field, then after that, how this color basically move, that is the path traced by this color is what we call it as streak line. Similarly, in the case of a smoke emanating from a chimney, how the basically the smoke distributes into the air, the, the path traced by the smoke particles in the air, in the flowing fluid, in the, he is a, what we call it as a streak line. In the case of study flow, all the, as already I mentioned, the path line, streamline and streak line are all identical. So, in case of study flow, already streamline, path line and streak line are identical. But in the case of unsteady flow, but in case of unsteady flow, streak line is different. I will show you actually how the streak line looks like in case of unsteady flow. For example, if you say, suppose this is a, a color dye being injected basically from this part. Now we have a nozzle here and through that nozzle the color dye is injected. So now if I see how the fluid particle, the First thing is how the fluid particle, the general fluid particle movement I am drawing. So these, these are all basically called as path lines. That means the path traced by a single fluid particle. This is the path traced by a single fluid particle. This is path traced by another fluid particle. This is the path traced by another fluid particle like that. Now once the, for example, when the fluid particle move in this direction, it moves, for example, in one second to this point, right? Now in the second, se second it moves up to here. In third, it has moved up to here. In four seconds, it has moved like that. In five seconds, six seconds, in seven seconds. Right? Now, the for example, same, any fluid particle, if you take it, how it moves, if you take it, suppose from this here one, then naturally it is two, then three, four, five, six, seven here and similarly if you take fluid particle moving here into two seconds it has come three seconds then four seconds then five seconds then six seconds seven seconds this is the path traced by it in seven seconds in each direction if you take different directions 
how the fluid particle moves in 7 seconds. So here in 3 seconds it has moved like this. 4 and 5, 6, it has 7. Suppose a fluid particle moving here, it has moved in 4 seconds up to here. In 5 seconds up to here, 6 seconds, 7 seconds. What I am drawing here is the fluid particles movement in each second along each path line. Then if you see here in 4 seconds it has come 5 seconds, 6 seconds, 7 seconds. So in each of the path line, the fluid particles whichever are coming or the jet which is the color dye which is coming out of this uh, nozzle moves like this actually. Suppose now if I join actually according to time if I take it uh, in 2 seconds uh, this is the path traced by the fluid particle color dye and in suppose 3 seconds if you see this is how the fluid particle color change. Then in 4 seconds if I see this is how basically the fluid point. Then in 5 seconds if you see this is how because the path traced by this dye in 5 seconds then in 6 seconds if you see in 7 seconds if you see all these red lines are called streak lines. Now what I have done, a dye we I have injected into the flowing fluid for 7 seconds basically. For how much period? 7 seconds, for a period of 7 seconds. In this 7 seconds, the position of the particle that was at dye jet for each of the seconds, if you see 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, uh, represent now this is the path lines. Now, the, this line, the color line which we have, we have made actually representing each time, that is what we call it as the streak line. Whereas in the case of study flow, all are both basically streamlines, streak lines and path lines are same. So this lecture we conclude at this point. And in today's lecture, we have concluded the remaining three types of fluid flow. Apart from that, we have taken up the description of flow pattern, streamline, path line, streak line. All these definitions, uh, streamline, streak line, path line are mainly in, important in case of analyzation of one dimensional flow that is more important. So with this, uh, we will uh, really conclude this lecture and take another topic uh, in the next lecture. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.